Hi guys, a few maintenance updates for the channel um, here. One, I actually have a straight camera now, um, and my camera isn't crooked, not that that makes much difference with the videos, um, except for the last one. Two, speaking of the last video, I am currently re-uploading it. Uh, not that many people saw it since I took it down this morning um, because I um, only uh, edited and uploaded half of the video, which was about five minutes. And um, for some, I, I had to export it twice initially because I shut my laptop when I was exporting it, which made the export fail so I um, I had an issue with that so it is currently exporting again and will be re-uploaded as soon as I am able to do that and so I am just like Ugh. I mean that was just a major hiccup for today because that video was supposed to go up at 11 it did go up at 11 but when I looked at it to check it to post it to my social media, I realized, huh, it's only five minutes. It should be a little longer than that because I know I talked more than five minutes for that particular video. And so here I am re-uploading it. Anyway, most of you should see it, um, the full video, when I have it uploaded. It'll be uploaded by the time you see this one, which is... Um, which is going up next week. That brings me to my final point um, to get out of the way. And the reason I am shooting this video now is because today I have more time to do this than I will in the next few days because I have writing to do. So I have writing to do. So I'm I want to focus on that and. Um, finish that out um, while I still have time. So um, that brings me to the topic of today's video or this week's video. And that is something very important to service dog teams and that is bonding. A bond between a handler and a dog is very important because without that, the dog doesn't want to work for the person. And if the dog that has to work every single day, even if they are not going out in public, um, that's a big misconception about service dogs is, what do they do when they get, are um, at home? They're still, even if they're not wearing that vest, they are still working. Um, I mean, they have to go get a remote or something the person dropped in the house. They may not have their vest on in the house, but they are still working, technically. Um, a vest is really only used for public's benefit because a lot of people aren't going to respect a dog if it's working what, what handlers, some handlers refer to as naked. Um, if that dog is wearing a vest, most people know it's working and um or they stupidly come up to you and ask if they can pet the dog and you have to say no it's working and i'm and in my case i'm like can't you see the dog is working it's wearing a vest and minding its own business go mind yours and get out of my way not that i will say that but uh that's kind of my uh my personal feelings uh, and that's why this is a diary. I am not, I kind of vent my spleen on here. So that's my thing. And so, I mean, the initial bonding of a service dog team is very important, which is why handler training is typically about two weeks. In the case of duo, they give us a week for training if they clear us as a team, which in my case, I'm not worried about that because um, 
as a Christian, I know God has this and he's had this since the beginning of this journey. And so I'm not really worried about that. And so I, um, so in the case of Duo, what they do is we do a week's worth of training in and out of class. We have the dog with us for most of that week. If they clear us and we they think the team dog is a good fit, we keep the dog with us for that entire week, even when we are not in class. And um, and then when we get home, we work with the dog on its skills in the house, and we eventually start working with the dog out in public. And so that helps with the bonding. But um, if you think about it, the things that facilitate bonding is walking the dog, feeding the dog, maybe picking up after the dog, anything you're doing to care for the dog is promoting bonding. And this is a little bit more not noticeable with pets because um just because it's a different type of relationship so but with service dogs it's very important because they are working for their people day in and day out so and my mom is like drilling it into my head this bonding thing is very important make sure you spend time with the dog play with the dog and i'm like yeah i'll do that which is why Everything else I've been doing up to this point is kind of taking a back seat at least for a month or so until I can figure out how much time I'm actually going to have working the dog into my schedule. Um, so um, this is just a key component to a lot of service dog um, handling. Um, there were um, service dog organizations if the person was training away from home, they would have to be with the dog all the time, 24-7. Um, I remember there used to be agencies, they would live in a dorm for two weeks straight with the dog, the dog was always with them. And that's how they bonded the team. I am not going to do that with duo, but they expect us to do this, 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 this order at this time and do all these things. Those things will promote bonding and not just our, our initial training that we do at their facility at that time. So understand this is a key component and that even works to how the public or family and friends interact with the dog. To facilitate good bonding with the service dog team, no one else feeds the dog. No one even can pet the dog or interact with the dog for several weeks until the dog and the handler are significantly bonded and the dog knows I'm their person. So, I mean, stuff like that, that's very important. Um, and that goes for a lot of service dog organizations and teams. They may have different rules, but it's essentially the same thing. Um, so, um, so just so anybody knows, if anybody's gonna get all huffy and offended, I mean, no one I know, obviously, but if anybody gets huffy and offended that they can't interact with a service dog initially, um, if you know somebody that has a service dog or something like that, don't get offended if they say, don't pet the dog right now, even if it isn't working and it's just maybe hanging out at your house. It's probably because they're trying to still bond with the dog and get the dog to adjust. Um, and they will let you pet the dog once the dog's 
acclimated to their life and um, the dog has bonded with them. So don't get offended, just get, give them time to let everything settle down and you will get to go all gaga and dog crazy at around this dog in due time. So, um, like, but I know there's people that want to be able to um, interact with the service dog. Um, and you can, you just can't do it while they're working or while um, the dog is um, trying to bond or acclimate with their owner. So, I mean, there are appropriate times to do that and times not to. So just keep that in mind. Hey guys, quick insert here, um, I, which I forgot to mention um, in my initial recording. Um, I'm going to put um, one of the videos I shot earlier um, up in the cards talking about um, a Netflix documentary. I don't know if it's still on there or if they took it down. It's called Dogs. Um, and the first episode is about a service dog um, for a girl with um, epilepsy. So if anybody's interested in that, I can't link to the documentary, but um, if you have a Netflix account, go watch it. The entire documentary is good. Um, and I'll link my video uh, talking about the documentary in the cards if you want to watch that. So, um, and in that episode of the documentary, they do talk about um, bonding with the dog and how important that is and how important bonding is to a service dog team. Um, that was kind of my tie in here. Um, so if you want to watch any of that, feel free um, and leave comments below if you had any thoughts. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to say here. And before this video gets any longer, uh, this is Service Dog Diaries signing off.